In nearly three years of running this channel and going out on the road and videoing, we've never seen this before. This is really exciting. Now, we came here a little while ago and they told us there's a Tesla supercharger going in here, and indeed there is. But we turn up here today and we find signs for a grid serve charging hub. What is going on? Have they scrapped the Teslas? Are they all going to be uh, grid serve? Let's find out. I'm Dave and this is Lim Services on the M6 in Cheshire. So why are we here? We're at Lim Services on the M6, we're in Cheshire. And the reason we're here is because last time we came, we were told there was a Tesla supercharger going in here. The area was all fenced off. There was a massive amount of work going on. And we went and saw the engineers. Now the engineers we do know uh, from previous visits. One of the guys uh, we met last in Washington near Newcastle. So these guys just travel the country and we meet up it's like old friends. So when we were here last time, they said that this is going to be a Tesla supercharger uh, and everything's fine. So that was a video that we put out. But we do keep a track of things so we don't just sit back and wait till it opens. That could be an awful long time. So we've come out today just on a, an update uh, mission to see what's changed. And uh, as we said, the first thing we found was the grid surf sign. So that really just raised a load of questions in our mind. What, what is going on here? So once again, well, thank you very much. So once again, we do uh, go and talk to them and it's a fascinating story here. The background of this is, this is Tesla. That isn't, so the site is split. So this is a joint venture. However, none of the crews work on both sides. They have totally separate crews, so totally separate bulldozers and cranes and everything else, totally separate electricians, ground workers and everything. So there are two sites going in here simultaneously. This side here, there's going to be 24 uh, Tesla superchargers. We've not yet get the, got the final designation of which ones they are. We're hoping these will be the V4 with the V4 cabinets, uh, but there's no guarantee on that. But all, they will be the V4 chargers. Uh, whether they get the V4 cabinets is a separate issue. Uh, but there are 24 going in here. All the electrics are in underground. All the bases are going in now. And there's a crew's doing the groundwork. Uh, so getting the site ready. This location, we're told, is going to uh, be ready to open around about Christmas. Now, that all depends, obviously, on the DNO. If the electricity national grid won't come and supply the electrician, that timeline is going to uh, extend. But they will be ready for switching this on uh, by Christmas. It will be in, installed, uh, cleaned up, painted, everything ready for Christmas. Running alongside that, there are 16 grid serve chargers there. Now I've not got a de designation on that, but the current trend is they do the 360 uh, kilowatt chargers, dual bay, and these are the ones, they're flagship models, and they call them uh, intelligent uh, distribution. What that means is uh, they have 360 kilowatts available. It's a dual bay. And if you pull two different cars into the bay, which can take different power, and the state of charge is such that they can both pull that power, the, the charger will actually give the higher energy draw one more power than the other one. So if you pull a Renault 5 in alongside a um, Ionic 5, uh, the Ionic 5 can go up to about 300 kilowatts. Renault 5 can do, do about 80. Those two together could almost draw full power from that one charger and GridServe tell us that uh, that way is much more efficient than doing 350 kilowatt single bay chargers. So the 16 going in there is being classed as what they call a charging hub. That one is not going to be ready, we're told, until about February. So very different time scale. We don't know what's going on. We would assume that when they bring the power into the site, it's going to be a common power or two put in at the same time. There's no reason why if they're coming in to put the Tesla supercharger substation in 
um, in October, November. There's no reason why they couldn't put the substation in for the grid serve, uh, but that we'll see as time goes by. Now, I think a lot of these locations have learned that I'm out and about filming uh, because I've just spotted this. Footwear must be worn at all times. Now, as I was at Arnold Clark, I was in my sandals and they wouldn't let me onto the site. What does this mean? Footwear? I was never planning on going in there without any shoes on at all. So it's really fascinating here to see, in effect, a joint collaboration. It's not because each of the crews, as I said, are totally independent. But this is all going on at the same time, so there's got to be some overlap in here. So we're trying to find out exactly what's going on because I did get a comment left uh, in the channel. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. But I get a comment recently from Kurt Walls, one of our regular viewers, and he told me that down south, Toddington Services on the M1, Moto, the Moto Services there, which has grid serve, is going to Moto Charge. So the CPO, in effect, is changing. And that's really interesting because one of the th themes I've been covering recently is what is going to happen to all these CPOs, all these networks that are charging 80, 85 pence. What's going to happen when everyone learns that there's much cheaper charging about? And it looks like grid service making some sort of move. Going on the website, Moto says they're forming the, their own CPO. They're gonna become their own charger network. So if what they're saying is true from the website, then Moto Charge is gonna become a major CPO. But you can't have grid service as a CPO with the same chargers as Moto Charge with a CPO. The two don't go together. So the suspicion is that there's some sort of deal going on where Moto Charge is just taking over a number of grid serve locations. And that's really fascinating. And that's a subject that we're searching down at the moment. But that also raises the question here. This is one where there are no existing agreements, no uh, collaborations or anything, and yet they're having a collaboration on an installation. So the question is, although they put the grid surf sign up, will this one ultimately be a moto charge location and the grid surf name will be taken off pretty much everything and moto charge will be put on. We saw this happen with Westmoreland Electric. At one point they were Swarco units and they were run by uh, GridServe and eventually uh, GridServe left the site. Uh, Westmoreland uh, services, they took over the chargers and they set up their own CPO as Westmoreland Electric and they have since handed over the admin side of it to Evolt. Uh, so th these sites are never simply owned by someone and run by someone and so it, it's, it's a complex issue and we're going to cover that again in a future video as to how these sites are put together and who controls what. But this is a fascinating one. We're getting, we're in touch at the moment with Moto Charge and we're trying to find out exactly what's going on. First of all with the whole company at the whole Moto Services network throughout the whole of the UK, but then particularly at this specific location. So we'll be sure to get back to, to you. If you don't want to miss that one, then please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll notify you every time we launch a video. So the fascinating story here going on in the background is what price are these going to charge? Now, Tesla will charge whatever they charge anyway. So they're totally independent of everything. No one can interfere with them. They'll set whatever price they want. Question, first of all, is will this be open to all? And the historical uh, reference is it will be open to all. There's no reason for this not to be open to all. So we are anticipating this will be an open to all site at the relevant prices, which is going to be currently about 55p for, um, uh, for peak time for non-Teslas and about 34 pence peak. Uh, Tesla rates will be a lot lower than that. That raises the question, what's going to happen to GridServe, particularly with MotoCharge now coming on the scene? 
So is this going to be a grid surf location with grid surf charges, grid surf prices run by grid surf, in which case those charges will be somewhere between 85 through 87 to 89p. 89p we've seen at Lancaster services and at Exeter uh, Moto services on the M6. Is it going to be a grid surf site or is it because this is a moto site is it going to be a joint venture between grid surf and moto or is the ultimate aim for moto to take over incorporate uh, engulf whatever you like to term uh, all grid surf charges on moto services into moto charge it's a fascinating question we're hoping to hear back from moto charge to give us some sort of uh, guidance or definitive answer as to what's going on. But in the meantime, what a great place to have stopped. This shows the benefit of getting out on the road and seeing what's going on and talking to the people who are actually installing these things. So we're now moving on to a Patreon meetup. We do these on a fairly regular basis where we will tell our Patreon members in advance where we're going to be and they can come and meet us if they want or not if they don't. So we're going there the sun's out so it's looking good so thanks very much for watching here we will keep you informed as to what the progress is but once again if you're not subscribed please do so i'm dave